My name is Sean Gambardella um, with Trimble. Uh, the team topic that we have is uh, responsibility in particular ball and court. So what we're trying to solve is how might we tag a submittal document with changes to ball and court responsibility in ways that each stakeholder is responsible for only the documents they are assigned so that managing ball and court handoff through the project platform improves transparency and efficiency of exchange. So what we have here is a trade contractor that is submitting a submittal for a specification section that was requested by a general contractor to build something for an owner. So what we came to is a lot of shared pains, um, a lot of statuses that have to go through, but in the end, you have a lot of different lenses. So you have a, a trade contractor lens of a submittal, you have a general contractor lens, you have an architect of record, you have an owner lens, and they all kind of look at it a little bit differently. So if you think of an owner may have, for their building, they think there's four things to get done. Well, that four things to an owner is really 10 things to an architect, which is really 20 things to a GC, which is really 50 things to a trade contractor because they're actually the ones doing the work. So what we came to is you have one submittal package that has to get to a bunch of people's hands to, for approval to get back to that same trade contractor so they can start doing their work. And it comes down to a lot, a lot of time and a lot of inefficiencies of getting that cycle completed. So what we did here, so we created some steps, but I'll get down to like an, a, a zoomed in view. But if you have one submittal package for a specification section, that has a data sheet, that has a shop drawing, that has a, that's for a, that's called a lighting package. It's turned in on a day, timestamp, to a GC, that GC, sends that submittal package over to the architect. That architect then reviews that, and then they have to disperse the information where it needs to. So a shop drawing could go to an engineer, a data sheet could that same engineer, the type of light fixture that the owner wanted has to go for approval. So that one step needs to go get dispersed. And then all those that information gets returned back. They have to accumulate it back together and they have to get send that back to the GC. They have to send that back to the trade contractor and hope nothing gets changed in between or nothing gets messed up in translation. Uh, the other thing that we came across was a submittal package is not just one line item. So a lighting package would have, let's call it 10 light fixtures. Eight of them could get approved. Two could get declined. They have it as declined. They have it as partially approved, but they care about the light fixture that takes eight weeks to, to, to build, not the one that takes, they can go get off the shelf tomorrow. So each lens is looking at things differently of trying to get this through. So what we came down to is each section or each area, there's an outbox and there's an inbox. So for in this area of going from the trade contractor to the GC, you have the, the inbox to go, or I'm sorry, for the outbox to go send the submittal package over to the GC. They get that, they review it, and then they send that back out for review for the architect of record. So there's an in and out for each piece, but when it came down to this one document needs to be broken down into smaller parts to get to the right people to approve it at, all at once. So it doesn't take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to get approved so they can start building. Um, and then shared panes that we haven't gone over. Um, multiple people have to provide approval for one smill document. Uh, companies versus people is a big one. Turning into the right person. If you think you turn into the superintendent, but you really turn it into the project engineer, it's their third day on the job that they don't really know and don't have any power to, to approve anything. That may just sit in someone's inbox when we get get going and take a long time for approval. Statuses. So all these statuses, each one, each piece could have a different status. Every every status is its own system of record. No one has one overall view. So each system of record is most likely out of sync with one another because they look at everything differently. So yeah, the, the main takeaways is people see things differently. There's not a one transparent view into what what status that this is in, getting the documents to the right people at the right times to make the right decisions, 
and then getting the uh, approval process sped up so the jobs can be done more efficiently. Did I miss anything, team? Well done. Let's do a round of applause first. No, one, one question I have, the, so the, the statuses that you have listed there with the colors, uh, those are like whose who's sta statuses according to who? Well, that was the, the thing. So there, there's not one universal state. So if you had a yeah. future state that has kind of an approved, or approved uh, status legend, if you will, because each one of these documents has a different status. It's tied to a submittal package, but it can't be completely approved in like there's different levels of this is partially approved. There's mm -hmm. different things. So each one of these documents has a different status in, in each of those steps. And each persona, only some of those statuses apply. <laughs> so. Nick. And to just add on to that, that's where we started to do this exercise about the in and out activities of you know what do you do when you receive it? And then what are the actions that you can take at each of those steps? so that we can kind of start to map the nuance between you know, what's something that's rejected versus what's something that's acceptable, um, and then push it up and down that pipeline. Interesting. Yes. There's also a difference I think we talked about with the submittal package status and the submittal items. Mm -hmm. If you think of it like a basket, you have your basket is the package, and the eggs, if it's an Easter basket, <laughs> are the items, right? So the package, you, you can't really put a status on the package. You put a status on the items in the package. And that's, that's a bit of a, sometimes that gets overlooked. So. It sounds like a, I'm sure there's people in the room that would argue, yeah, the other, that you should, yeah, just only allow this, the package to be approved. But again, yeah, that's for the room to debate, not me. Other uh, questions. thoughts, questions, yeah. So did you think about the concept that you might have packages at also at the GC level that there's actually could be, could be the potential for multiple layers of packages where you'd have a trade partner and then the GC packages that together? Nested packages, I like that. Yeah. So are you referring to more the... So like an, an example yeah. would be like doors and hardware. You might purchase that, you might have set multiple trades actually going ahead mm -hmm. and doing that. The architect wants to see that all in one package, door and hardware, but you might have a hardware subcontractor, so they're giving you all the hardware, and then you have a door subcontractor, they're giving you all the, everything the door, and you have to put that all together into a package for the architect to review, because obviously they are very much interconnected, mm -hmm. and you can't approve one without the other. We saw that in happening in this state here, so if you had multiple trade contractors turning into their piece of their submittal, they have to aggregate all that together prove it turn into here and then these people have to approve each part that's where the confusion comes in so like for a door is the jam the doorknob the actual door material that all has to be approved before anything gets started so there's mm -hmm. there's interdependencies of things that's where if you had things broken down you may want to track or keep an eye on the things that pertain to you and let the other stuff that doesn't apply to you go by the wayside. Yes, and that goes to the argument of whether we approve a entire package or we improve individual items. But, but it's a little <laughs> bit of semantics maybe because I, I don't think a trade contractor needs to have their own package. Like they just, if their item involves a bunch of things, but I guess that, that is the question and maybe it's more of, of a Kelly question is that would, would you consider as a trade contractor to have your own packages with items within it that then, if you submit that, then yes, there's definitely mm. two packages. There's the GC's package and yours. Um, I think in my experience, as trades, we, gen we generally tend to collect the packages together and submit them, even if there's a little bit of crossover. We, we take ownership as sort of the lead trade contractor. So when we're talking about doors and hardware, yeah, there might be a hardware contractor, but they're not going to typically install all of the hardware separate from the person installing the door. Either the hardware is going to get installed into the door and then the door is going to get installed so the door contractor is owning it or, you know, the carp carpenter, whoever's owning it at that level. Similar to the way we might have submittals that include hardware, equipment. They might go out and maybe the structural engineer needs to approve them as well as the electrical engineer. And so there's typically kind of an, an owning trade contractor, even if it is a group effort. That, that puts the package together. And so 
I, I don't typically see that. Not that it's unheard of. Yeah. But but we do <clears throat> tend to to take ownership of that and then disperse. One thing that was nice is we actually had a almost true representation of all our personas. You had an architect, you had the owner's rep, you had the, the trade contractor. So a theme that at least stood out to me was, yes, all the parts and pieces, the, the building blocks are consistent, but each project puts them together a little bit differently. So coordination up front and shifting left and how these things, like what is the overall step-by-step -step for a submittal, an RFI, if that's agreed upon and we know all the steps, then it seems like Regardless of the project, if everyone has the same expectation of what happens in each step, then that seemed to be, you can define the, pu the puzzle pieces and then the, the coordination has to come up front. All right, thank you so much, Sean, great job. How do we get to a point where there's a central system of record that everyone is contributing to and pulling from so that everyone's looking at the same source of truth for their information? So. No one has a different opinion of a status of a submittal. No one has a different opinion of something that needs to be reviewed. Everyone knows what the process is for the review. It's in whose hands, who needs, what's the next action needs to be taken. So everyone can be on and have a accountability to get things completed faster. So uh, we wordsmithed our problem statement a little bit, like the entire thing. <laughs> so that originally was how might we tag submittal documents with changes to ball and court responsibility in ways each stakeholder is responsible for only the documents they are assigned so that managing ball and court handoff through the, a project platform improves transparency and efficiency of exchange. That evolved to how might we add visibility to agreed upon submittal statuses and digitize the review process for all stakeholders in ways that reduce duplicate work and unneeded documents for each person transparency and efficiency are improved at all steps of the process. So we identified that there was two problems we're trying to solve. One's people, communication, interaction, there's a kind of a misconception technology is going to remove that, just like an easy button, but there, you still have to have interaction f f with people in combination with technology to make the process better. So what we agreed upon is that at the beginning of a project, the owner and the GC need to be on the same page. What are we building? What, that would equate to like a submittal log of what we're trying to accomplish. The second meeting that needs to happen uh, pre-project kickoff is a sync with the GC and sub. So we do have, today we have clash detection meetings, everything of what's not, what's impairing us from building, but there needs to be the same meetings to establish what is the agreed upon process for this project, for these group of people to build it efficiently, and we have all the same expectations. So what we came up with is everyone before had their own system of record, everyone had their own status, everyone had a different source of truth. There was not an agreed upon status, so everyone had a different lens what was going on. So what we took is, that you set up that submittal, it goes into this common data environment, common data exchange here. The second meeting sets up process flows and rules. So statuses that are defined, importance of weight of submittal, so the things that have t cost and, and schedule impacts. Dependencies, which ones have inter interdependencies. So you're setting up these rules. So what we did was we took one submittal that included one light fixture across what well, has multiple documents. So we looked at all the steps. So you go from a trade contractor submitting it through the CD or CDX. That gets dispersed over to the GC who says everything is there, it's supposed to be there based upon what we agreed upon from the architect and owner. That gets the approval. Now, instead of each person getting the entire thing, the disbursement of documents of what they agreed upon, what they should see, is dispersed through the system. So the rules of, I'm an engineer, so I need the shop drawings and a data sheet. I'm an owner, I just need to see the final approval. I'm an architect, I wanna see after everything's approved what's gonna be there. So you know, but based off these rules, what should transpire. 
But with this system and the rules, you're not having an inbox per day. Everything's getting dispersed apparently, accordingly. And then once this is approved, it goes back to the GC so they know it's approved. And then when that GC puts back together, that same approval goes into that, that CDX and then re relays the information back to the trade contractor. So everyone is going to one source of truth. So they're pushing data and they're pulling data and they're receiving information and they're referencing one source of truth for statuses. Now, obviously that's, we took the greenfield approach what would be the utopia state, but we definitely define that everyone has a different system, system of record, so there needs to be a way to combine information. Uh, but it all starts with bringing people together to define what needs to happen and what's agreed upon. If the people piece doesn't solve, then technology is not going to do anything. And then, uh, so benefits uh, for the system eliminates duplicate information, so you don't get the entire submittal when you only want to see one page. You get the things that are important to you. Uh, statuses are defined, and so you know what decline with changes means. So there's not just a, an ambiguous, what does this status actually mean? Uh, risk indicators, so does this submittal have cost impacts? Does it have um, schedule impacts? We identify that like in a fixture submittal, you may have 10 fixtures trying to get approved, but like, a time that has a bunch of impact to the schedule. And see the keep things on schedule, and then just shared source of truth. Those are our key benefits for this future state. Awesome. I have, I have one quick question, but first round of applause. That was great. <laughs> so I can see there's there's two different CDX systems. Oh. Was that intentional, or yeah, is so that just because you ran out of plug enough, space? <laughs> there wasn't enough wheels or cogs on the wheel, so like... <laughs> This is a uh, bilateral. <laughs> it, that, that is always a challenge. Yeah, there never seems to be enough cogs on the uh, on the wheel for that. Okay, but the idea is it is, w would be one yeah, system. Yeah, one okay. CDX. Very cool. Awesome. O other questions from the room? Solve this in the middle. How are you able to identify which documents are moved by which stakeholders? The rules kicked off. So uh, the intention was like these status rules. If submittal 2605, whatever the lighting fixture, that's determined of rule, this needs to be seen by the electrical engineer, the architect. The, so that there's, based off your, your schedule, your submittals, and, and the specifications, that'll tell who's supposed to get these documents in what state. So, so I, I think you're onto something there, Gary, with like deciding when a pack, or like when a package should be defined versus when an item gets defined. Because a submittal list or like submittal log would have all of your items, but to me, a package would always be put, put together later. Or yeah, what, I'm sure you guys are talking about. It. So to address that, um, when it's on its way back and it gets to the general contractor, they still have that ability to do the package. But what we wanted to do to enable more of a kind of lean or agile review process is we can get anything that's good up and down the system. It'll still stop at the GC if it, there's other dependencies. And I don't think we talked about dependencies is in there in super small text. But those dependencies is then what creates a new, the new idea of what a package might be to capture that. I think also a critical part of this is making sure that you know up front what's going to be submitted and who's going to be reviewed. The package becomes less of an issue if you know the items and who's responsible. It's kind of a, a different way of thinking, but when we know what's agreed that's going to be submitted early on, then it's easier for us to track through the CDX. So did you determine or think about how sometimes all these stakeholders are not on board when you're having to have these kickoff meetings and conversations? Yeah, I think uh, Duane brought that up, that there's different phases. Some is uh, vertical construction versus civil construction. So there's like different phases of the project would have different kickoff meetings depending on the, what's being done. And the, did you think about using potentially the submittal process for a lot of different submittals that are outside of what I would call traditional design and submittals or like product submittals, things like uh, safety documentation and those type of deliverables that we're always asking for as a GC. Yeah, I think like 
the main thing that we wanted to accomplish is getting these parties talking. So in, in software, it's the term shift left. It's like extreme pre-planning. So we're trying to, if you did that construction, if you extreme pre-plan so the GC is fully understanding what they're gonna build, and the same type of pre-plan goes with the subs of this is, you fully understand what you're, the architect is expecting you to, to, to turn in or the engineer is expecting you to turn in. So that way there's very much clear understanding from a, a pre-planning standpoint. So if, if one of the things that comes out of the submittal log is safety documentation, then that's the thing that this person's obligated to turn into and then that really gets relayed down to the trade contractor or whoever's supposed to turn it in. Awesome, other thoughts, questions? Cool, Gary, you're on it, round of applause. <laughs>the main things that we came up with is solutions to increase in productivity and spill processes. One, have it defined, what are we submitting on? And then two, or what are the rules for making that submittal? Where does it go? Who's it expecting it? What are they expecting? And that way we can have those established rules. And then the big utopia state that we defined and proposed is a, a common CDX at a project level. So everyone's inputting, and, and out, and, uh, inputting data and taking data out, this one common system. And then that system also has rules to know who to disperse data to, and then when it's approved, when it comes back, who to send it back to. So that, that lead time between uh, submitting a submittal and getting a approval back, that, that, um, that time to approval is decreased by a substantial amount.